Welcome to uh, today's Disaster Zone TV. With me today is King County Elections Director, Julie Wise. We will be talking about vote by mail and how secure the system is to protect you from both voter fraud and cyber attacks. And welcome, Julie. Great to have you uh, on the show again, really. Glad to be back. Two big questions for us. The first one is, are you concerned about vote by mail voter fraud here in King County or in the United States? As an election administrator, of course, I take voter fraud and the security of our elections very seriously. What we have seen here in King County, Washington State, and in vote by mail states is that instances of voter fraud are exceedingly rare. How rare? In 2016, for example, we saw a potential voter fraud rate of one thousandth of a percent in King County, which is just 17 cases out of more than a million ballots. And that's when we compared our voter rolls to 30 some other states' voter rolls. So while some continue to speak about elections that have no actual experience running elections, making some really wild claims about the security of vote by mail, we've really shown here in King County and in Washington State that vote by mail is safe, it's secure, and it's accessible. And a decade in to vote by mail here in King County, it's clear that our voters very much appreciate not having to wait hours in line uh, to have their voices heard. What do you think is the biggest cybersecurity threat uh, that we have uh, to election systems in the United States? Yeah, I really see two main ways that our elections are threatened here in the United States. The first would be an attempt to hack any election system, including voting machines that we don't see in Washington state, but that we do see across the country. Now, the second is the rampant spread of misinformation that sows doubt into legitimate elections and really feeds voters false information about how to cast their ballot. In 2016, there was an attempt to hack into election systems here in Washington state. Those were unsuccessful. With those attempts, we have become even more vigilant about continuing to protect our systems here in Washington state, to continue to build that stronger firewalls, to keep out those um, who wish to interfere with our elections. But we've also seen how social media can really be weaponized in our country. Misinformation spreads like wildflower. It's unreliable. Um, biased sources are shared really without thought. Coming to people that you can know and trust information from, like myself, election administrators across the state, across the country, we're working really hard to provide clear, unbiased, nonpartisan information for our voters. But honestly, um, it feels sometimes like an uphill battle. Um, there's really less that an election administrator can do about the spread of misinformation um, but it's really important for, for voters to be aware of and um, for all of us to think critically about what we see on the internet. Yeah, you can only control what piece you have and uh, really being discriminating consumers of news where you get that news from is an important factor, as you point out. Those trusted resources, right? Really making sure you're going to the secretary of state of your state or the county or the jurisdiction that runs elections to make sure you get the facts. Yeah, there are benefits to a vote by mail system for accuracy and security. What, what are those? There are so many. That's what I love about vote, vote by mail and really why I've dedicated 20 years of my life to running elections. I've had the opportunity to work part of those 20 years at polling place elections. And for the last decade, I've run vote by mail elections. And in my personal experience, vote by mail is both secure and more accessible for our voters. So vote by mail gives election administrators also the ability to check, double check, and triple check the work. We have paid professionals that are state certified, nationally certified, managing this election. We can hold a ballot that seems to have an issue, take the time we need to to investigate, and make a determination on whether or not that ballot can be counted. It also means that we eliminate more risk with vote by mail. When you think about the chain of custody with ballots, it's much clearer in vote by mail. In polling place elections, our last one, we had 8,000 poll workers we hired. We only had four to 12 hours to train each individual. 
and sent out hundreds of, to hundreds of locations across the county that you're not always sure the internet or other security concerns about hundreds of hundreds of polling places. So there's really no worrying in vote by mail about um, poll workers bringing the ballots and materials back when they're supposed to. There's no poll workers making hard judgment calls on one day a year that they're asked to work. You know, we process all the ballots we receive all in one location. And I hope we'll dig in a little bit more about how secure our location is. Um, it's so much more controlled. It's less spread out as an operation. So as you can imagine, as a manager of elections, uh, vote by mail elections just are, are so much cleaner to run. But it also allows our voters to track their ballots from when we send them out to when they come back to us. If there's any issue with a signature, for example, we can communicate that with our voters. It sounds old school, but I think what's really important is that vote by mail leaves us with a paper trail. Yeah. We retain those ballots. We have the envelopes. We have all those materials if we need to go back, do a recount, or look into anything. There are different types of security systems, physical and cyber security. So what are the precautions? And I know I, I heard one thing in the news lately where, say, you know, these ballot collection boxes are a place where fraud can happen and uh, the security of the ballots. That. So how about addressing both the physical boxes themselves out in remote locations where people can just drop off their ballot. And then also all the, the precautions you have taken uh, physically and then cyber uh, for your own facility. Two vital areas for, for security in, um, in regards to elections. You know, after the 2016 presidential election, I was the first election administrator in the country to invite the Department of Homeland Security to do a physical security audit of our of our facility, where we're processing over a million of King County voters' ballots. I was also the first election administrator in this state uh, to invite the state auditor's cybersecurity team to do a cybersecurity audit with us. You know, our facility was designed specifically to securely process vote by mail ballots. And we worked with a security consultant that also does casinos because that's how important and valuable ballots are to us. Our facility is monitored 24 seven by at least 50 security cameras. We also have really cool web cameras that you can watch us hard at work from the comfort of your home. We've upgraded those web cameras so that you can really see with clarity of the work that we're doing there. We wanna provide that visibility to our voters, to our observers, even amid a COVID crisis. That really is transparency. The voters It really can. is. And you know, we have a very secure ballot processing floor, right? You have to have a badge. You also have to have a biometric. You have to have the finger that matches as well. Our tabulation server and secure storage cage also require fingerprint ID for access with only a limited amount of staff that are able to go those. You know, in terms of cybersecurity, there are layers and layers of security in place to ensure that nobody is able to penetrate the systems. I think it's important to remember that the voter registration system all of our voter data is completely separate from the tabulation system, the system that's counting the votes. I think it's also incredibly important to recognize that that tabulation system that's counting the votes is entirely closed network. It's not connected to the internet. It's hardwired on site to our facility. There is only a small handful of people at the elections facility that have access to that. And I'm not included in that. Okay. Um, the leadership team isn't included in that. These are, these are individuals that have to go into the room in teams of two. There are uh, windows, glass windows on every single side of the room so that everyone can watch as well. And then they each have different credentials to be able to get into the system. And they're logging that they're entering the room and going into the system. And again, that's on camera as well. Our systems and even our email are monitored closely for threats and phishing attempts all the time. Every attachment is scanned by security software before we can even open it up. And every staff member takes annual training around cybersecurity. And okay. our drop boxes, those steel tanks are a thousand pounds. They are cemented into ground and kind of funny, but we've had some different run-ins, literally run-ins with the drop boxes. In fact, we welcome students to our facility for a tour to see how secure it is and the school bus accidentally hit one of our drop boxes. Our drop box didn't have a mark on it. The school bus didn't look so good. Those are also right. secured with security seals and two staff that go out 
and they have to put them into a bin that's also sealed. When they bring it back to the facility, it all has to match. But yes. These are paid uh, election workers. Two-person accountability. Well, I, a lot of people don't know. I mean, there's not a national election system. It's 50 states, but then within each state, counties like yours, King County, run their own elections. So how about briefly talk about the relationship between yourself and the Washington State Secretary um, of State who runs elections for the state per se? The Secretary of State's office is really responsible for providing administrative guidelines and oversight over election processes for all 39 counties here in Washington State. This is vital because what this does is it helps create a uniformity in our elections across the state and ensure that we are all adhering to the same state election laws. If we look back to elections like in 2004, I think what we were missing at that time is having some really strong statewide rules so that we're all conducting elections the same. Then you have the county levels where you, you um, I'm sorry, at the state level, they're creating that uniformity. They're also responsible for a voter registration database, or what we call vote law here in Washington state. Then King County elections and other election administrators across the state are really responsible for the actual running and conducting of elections. It's really our responsibility to maintain the rolls, to get voters their ballots, and then count those ballots once returned. We work really closely with the Secretary of State's office, so do all county election officials to make sure that our elections run smoothly. Okay, well one, Last question for you, uh, and you're talking to every possible voter out there. Um, what advice do you have for them to make sure that their vote is counted? The first thing that you've got to do to be heard is to vote, right? You really do um, need to vote in, in order to make sure that your voice is heard in this election. And what I'm strongly encouraging every voter, my friends and family and neighbors, is to vote early. Don't wait. Don't gamble your vote at 7.59 trying to get to a ballot drop box. Make sure that your vote is in early. So make a plan now. What voters should be doing is checking their voter registration record and make sure that they're all set to go, that they've got the right address on there because that's where we're gonna mail your ballot. And um, really in, in all seriousness, um, I would offer a couple pieces of advice for voters. Track your ballot. Head online to King County Elections website. That's simply kingcounty.gov slash elections. You can track your ballot, see when you get it approximately in your mailbox. And then once you return it, look on the ballot tracker and verify that we have it. And if we don't have it within a couple of days, contact our office so that we can make sure to track down your ballot. I think one of the really cool things that we're doing and concerned with the United States Postal Service is tracking the mail even more so. We've always used an intelligent mail barcode to track ballots as they go out. We're gonna do that as they come on the way back in as well. So we can see where each of our voters' ballots are. But turn your ballot in, don't wait. Go ahead and get ready now. Make sure you've got your voter registration record up to date. And then remember, you don't need a postage here in, in Washington State. Just get that ballot into one of our drop boxes. There's 450 across the state of Washington or into one of your mailboxes or those blue boxes. Everything's prepaid now. Everything is prepaid. And I can't, I can't forget to let people, to remind people to sign your return envelope. Make sure okay. that you sign it. That is important. It's critical for us to be able to count your ballot. Okay. Well, um, thank you, Julie, for just sharing everything about what individuals can do um, to participate in our democratic institutions and the number one as a citizen is voting. So uh, thank you. And this brings us to the close of today's show. Thank you, Julie Wise, King County Elections Director for appearing on Disaster Zone and talking about vote by mail. Uh, for everyone at home, today is a good day to start being prepared for disasters and don't forget to vote. Bye-bye.